Okay, it was a small deposit uh, which was exhausted almost uh, for, for one neighborhood and few factories um, in the past. And in six years, already 40% of power generation is based on gas. It was 80% coal generation, 20% oil, oil only five years ago. Today we are 60% coal, 40% gas. And in no time, in five years time, in 2014-15, According to our analysis and forecasts, we are going to be 60% gas, 40% coal, and renewables, as you see here in the graph, um, catching. The government wants an objective of 10% renewable generation of power in two, by 2020. I hope, I really hope, we're doing so much work to promote renewable energy. 3-4% if you get it, it will, it's going to be very much. Now, gas, where the gas is going to come from? So the first pipeline is a depleted field in two or three years offshore Israel, 20 kilometers offshore Ashkelon, southern Israel, going to be depleted in two, three years. Second pipeline just inaugurated two years ago from Egypt. It worked for about almost 20 years on this project on virus capacities. The gas is coming and not coming. The reason is, excess demand in Egypt, economic issues this day for gas, but tomorrow it might be a geopolitical question, a geopolitical issue because nobody knows who is going to be after Mubarak, and this geopolitically, this flow of gas might be cut. In a country that is basing 60% of its gas, of its electricity production, of course, uh, industrial uh, utilization or others on gas, really need more sources, Shlomo mentioned, we find somebody took care of us, and it's not, it was not luck. One minute, major gas reserve offshore Israel will take five years to develop. This gas of Tamar, major geopolitical issue, since the, the Lebanese, so somehow the, the, the um, Cyprus, 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 uh, Cyprus, also claiming uh, rights for this deposit because the border the uh, marine border between Israel and Lebanon were never delineated, and uh, we are dealing, uh, the government has to take care of that. There is a major dispute. Uh, we're going to continue need to follow that later on. Renewable energy, I will say just one thing. If a country really needs, in addition to what Shlomo uh, really said, basically we need, by 2020, just to meet the uh, requirements uh, or the objective of the government, 10%, though this is fossil fuel by 2030, and 20%, 10% renewables by 2020, 20%, let's assume by 2030, we need, and that's divide, especially solar, that's a major competitive advantage that we have here in Israel, some wind, some biomass. For only 10%, we really need, today there is 12,000 12, megawatt installed capacity. As mentioned, coal and gas. And in 10 years time, to achieve 10% renewable, especially solar, we need 4,000 megawatts. We have zero now, zero, absolutely zero, maybe 10 megawatts of uh, 20 megawatts of PV. Uh, do is somebody really thinks that it is viable that Israel is going to be will uh, install a country will install 4,000 megawatts of solar, wind, and so on in 10, nine years time? So really. For that, we've done it with gas. You just said that we've done it with gas. With gas, it's a, same, it's a different story. We can continue to debate, uh, discuss it because my time is running. With solar it's energy, not running, it's finished. It's finished. <laughs> so I will continue and just tell you. I will continue. I'll continue to my last slide. My last slide, and that's a vision. What I see as a reality happening in our region, not that I want it to happen, is that many countries in the region are pursuing or continue to, uh, uh, to, to, to promote uh, nuclear energy. And France has much to do with that, and this is understood. Arriva, the French technology, signing almost every country in North Africa just participated in a conference, renewable <coughs> and nuclear energy in North Africa, with all my uh, colleagues, um, and Jordan and Egypt and Algeria and other countries, especially Saudi Arabia, of course, Iran. And they have a very good reason for that. As an energy strategist, I would advise them to go nuclear because they save oil for export, because they save more gas for export. And if they are like Jordan, like Israel, energy importers, 
or Tunisia, so they can enhance their energy security <laughs> in this respect. I finish. Inshallah. Inshallah, I can uh, just uh, suggest some of the reports that we are producing, creating the World Bank report, just the fresh news that we are uh, creating the conditions for a thriving solar energy in Israel. Those of you who are familiar, um, be glad to give it to you fresh. Uh, and two other reports. One of them is... Uh, Amit, we shall have a, a break in a very short time. I'm not going to be, unfortunately, we have to go. Uh, unfortunately, so those reports uh, of... Uh, uh, major utilization of uh, solar energy. We just finished the report for Algeria, for Tunisia, for Jordan, for the World Bank, and Morocco and Egypt, are, uh, those reports are upcoming. I believe that the World Bank will publish them in two uh, months.